What is the most disturbing thing your kid has said when taking about their imaginary friend? When my older daughter was 2 or 3, she used to have a couple of imaginary friends, Dodo and Dee Dee. They were typical imaginary friends. She would talk to them and play with them and tell me about their lives. Then one day, when she was about 3, she was talking on her play phone when I walked into the room. She hung up her phone and said to me, with a completely flat voice and deadpan expression, the evil is coming. It scared the shit out of me. She seriously had an imaginary friend named the evil. Turns out the evil was actually a pretty nice friend. She just had an unfortunate name. My little brother's imaginary friend, Roger, lived under our coffee table. Roger had a wife and nine kids. Roger and his family lived peacefully alongside us for three years. One day, my little brother announced that Roger wouldn't be around anymore since he shot and killed him and his whole family. I don't know if he remembers any of this, but his genuine lack of remorse was very disturbing. An exchange between one of the students, 5 years old, in my student teaching placement and myself. Me, what do you want to write about? Ha, huh, Jack. Me, oh, who's Jack? Ha, huh, he's my invisible friend. Me, oh, okay, tell me something about Jack. Ha, huh, he's dead. My little brother used to talk about a woman who would visit his room at night. He said she wore a red dress, that her name was Franny, and that she would sing to him. And that she floats. Well I actually had a relative who died years before he was born named Fanny and her favorite color was red, and I think she was buried in a red dress. When we showed him a picture of her he said that was who was visiting him. He also said a man named Jacob who dressed like a lumberjack slept in my bed. Not an imaginary friend but this was back in the 80s, when my daughter was 3. We were watching MTV, back then it was cool, and played back to back videos. The bangles walked like an Egyptian came on and my daughter just stood there staring at it. When the video was done she turned to me and said, we didn't sing, or dress that way back then. Slightly amused I laughed and asked her to sing for me the way the Egyptians sang back then. She proceeded to sing a strange tune in a haunting melody that sent chills down our spine. Later she drew a picture of her dress, and I started crying. It was too ancient and intricate to be bullshit. When I was about 4, I had an imaginary friend named Bomber. I remember pretty well that he wore a purple turban and had darker skin. I made my mom set a place for him at the dinner table and scooched to the edge of my bed every night to make room for him for months. For my dad's birthday that summer, my parents had a party. We had a small pool, and by this point I was allowed to be in the shallow end with my water wings, if an adult was watching me. With the adults all distracted, though, I decided to break the rules, and go in without my wings or supervision. Someone noticed me underwater pretty soon after, head and butt my legs kicking toward the edge. My dad jumped in, fully clothed, and pulled me out. Fuss ensued. When it was clear I was alright, the first thing I said to my mom was Bomber told me to just keep kicking. That I'd make it to the edge, if I just kept kicking. The next day, when my mom was setting the table, I stopped her, when I saw her set Bomber's place. He was gone, and I guess I stopped speaking of him after that. TL, doctor, my imaginary friend saved my life then dipped out. Talking to a 6 year old boy in my placement classroom. Boy is working on his schoolwork and talking to something slash someone that is by his side, but there's nothing there asterisk. Boy, stop it, stop it, I'm trying to do work. Me, what's going on? Says in a deep, dark, forceful whisper. Boy, I've been having these fantasies for 15 years and I'm sick of it. I had lots of imaginary friends when I moved to a new country. Since I didn't at all have any real friends, I made up friends. But just like me, they were afraid of being rejected and laughed at. I had this vision that all the people that were mean to us will go to hell and burn. My grandmom had no idea of these friends. Once when we were sitting, eating dinner, my parents were out somewhere, I said something along the lines of, Hey, are you not hungry? Eat now. Mind you I was also staring at an empty chair. My grandmom looked at me weirdly thinking I was talking to her, but before she managed to ask me anything I spoke again. Eat up, Thomas. They might be laughing now, but they won't be laughing once they are all on fire. And I resumed eating. 
Oh the look on my grandmom's face. For a whole year she tried proving to my mom that I was possessed by the devil. TL. Dr. Nobody laughs once I turn them to ashes. When my niece was two, her grandfather, my father, died. A few months later, she started the phase of talking to herself, imaginary friends and such. One day, I asked her who she was talking to. She replied I'm talking to the man. I asked what the man looked like, and she described my dad perfectly. I asked if he had a name, and she gave my father's name, even though she only knew him as grandpa. Apostrophe. The creepiest part was, when she told my mother, that the man told her where his lost wedding ring was, which she had been looking for since he passed. It was right where she said. My time to shine. My parents told me this story, but now I'm gonna tell it to you. A little after I was born, my sister Julia had an imaginary friend named Jessica. She was Julia's friend for a long time, when things started to get a little weird. At first my parents shrugged it off as a normal occurrence, but after a while they began to believe that our house was haunted. One night as my parents put me, about one years old, to sleep, I begin to cry and point at the corner, my mom was still in there and began to try to comfort me, but I continued to cry and point at the same corner. All of a sudden, my sister walks into my room and points at the corner and yells Jessica stop it. Immediately I stop crying. And Julia says like it is completely normal that sometimes Jessica likes to put on scary masks and scare people. My mom who was understandably freaked out stammers to my sister tell Jessica that if she can't play nice, she can't play here at all. A couple weeks go by and Julia tells my mom that her eyes turn green when she is mad and her voice gets deeper. My mom didn't know how to respond to this and just said okay. Eventually Julia outgrows her imaginary friend and stops playing with her. A year and a half later my little sister Abby begins to talk. She then goes on to tell us about her friend that no one else can see. She then tells my mom about how her eyes turn green when she is upset. I remember this distinctly because she dropped a pan and it scared me. She asked Abby what her name was and she said, Jessica. About a year ago, my 4 years old niece started talking to her imaginary friend Michael Jackson. He was with us all the time tea parties and over our phone conversations. It was always hilarious to see a stranger's reaction when she would yell in the store Michael Jackson is calling as she would whip out her play phone. He has since been replaced by Prince Eric, who is a little bitch, if you ask me. I've posted this story somewhere before, but my cousin, when she was 5 and I was 17, had a stuffed rabbit that she talked to and carried everywhere. One day she was asleep on the couch while I was watching her and she woke up and started yelling at her rabbit for no reason. One minute she was knocked out, the next, she's awake, glaring at her rabbit, yelling, no, you can't do that, that's bad, don't do it. Repeatedly, I asked her what was wrong tried to get her to stop, but she wouldn't listen. I finally just took the rabbit up to her room, and when I came back down she was asleep on the couch again. Fuck whatever that rabbit was planning on doing. Posted this before. A parent of one of my students told us in a meeting that she was concerned because her son, 7 years old, talked about an invisible ghost who would talk to him and play with him in his room. He said the ghost was called the captain and was an old white guy with a beard. The kid would tell his mom that the captain told him when he grows up his job will be to kill people and the captain would tell him who needed to be killed. The kid would cry and say he doesn't want to kill when he grows up but the captain tells him he doesn't have a choice and he'll get used to killing after a while. I was always creeped out working with that student after that. Not the parent, but the child. I don't remember how old I was, somewhere around kindergarten, but I had an imaginary friend. His name was Ash. One morning I heard my father mumble something about having sex to my mother. At the time I had no clue what he was talking about. I assumed it was something really grown up and that's why he'd said it so quietly. So, breakfast ends and I decide I want my parents to think I'm a little more of an adult than they think. And with all the swagger a young child could muster, I get up from the table and begin walking to my room. Before I'm out of the kitchen though, I casually mention to both my parents that I'm just going to be in my room with Ash having sex. I'm not gay. My daughter used to tell me about a man 
who came into her room every night and put the sign of the cross on her forehead. I thought it was just a dream. Then my mother-in-law sent over some family photos. My daughter looked right at the picture of my husband's father, who has been dead for 16 years, and said that's the man who comes into my room at night. My husband later told me his father would always do the sign of the cross on his forehead when he was young. So, when my sister was probably about 6 or 7, she had an imaginary friend named Emily. She told us Emily lived in her closet, wore an old black dress, and had long dark hair, and she was the same age as my sister. My sister played with Emily constantly. My parents started noticing my sister acting weird. Just sitting in the middle of her room whispering to Emily quite a bit, and acting a lot more distant towards them. I remember a very specific day, my brother was walking by her room and my sister was sitting in the middle of her room. But she turned around, and hissed at him. He was scared shitless. He told me it didn't even look like my sister. My parents ran up to her room and I could hear my sister just screaming and screaming as loud as she get out. I have no idea what happened in that room. But I ran to the bottom of my stairs and the screaming stopped. I saw my parents holding my sister crying their eyes out. She was sobbing as well. I've asked her about it today. She's 24 now. She told me that Emily used to tell her to do horrible things to herself. She actually used to wake up on the roof and not remember how she got there. I'm not kidding. Apparently Emily absolutely hated my parents. So she turned my sister against them. She hates talking about it, so I never brought up that specific night. This all happened at my old house. When we moved into a different house, Emily was gone. I'm not making any of this up. My sister's little friend was a really big deal to my family and messed things up for a long time. I'm just relieved we left that house. Here's my story. This was my 4 year old Jaden. Now, it was the middle of summer and we were just having a lazy day at home. We had the television on, but pretty much on mute. Jaden, my son, was playing with some of his toys. When he started talking to someone, saying things like Monjack, you're the bad guy. I just assumed that it was an association to the toys he was playing with. So I, like many others would, brushed it off. Not a week later, I was just talking to Jaden about this dream he had the night before. It was him going away with a friend. When I asked what the friend's name was he answered Jack. But, being me I brushed it off as one of his toys. He kept mentioning this Jack person through the next few weeks, and after a while I just snapped and asked him who Jack was. He lifted his arm up, and pointed behind me. He said something that made me jump, why don't you just ask him yourself? This freaked me out, but I assumed it was just an imaginary friend. The next day I had a friend over for lunch, and we were just talking when Jaden walked out. He was generally talking, or playing, but it was with someone. My friend Tess asked him who he was talking to. He replied with Jack. I was asking Tess if her daughter Alicia, who was now 14, ever had an imaginary friend, and she told me she didn't, but her sister's son had one that she thought was a spirit. From then on I was on the edge about this Jack. A week later Jaden was in his room yelling. So I ran upstairs, scared someone was in the house, with a knife in hand. When I got to Jaden's room there were blocks, toys, books, and clothes everywhere. Jaden was in a horrible mood. I started asking him why he had messed his room up, and he just sat there in silence. So I yelled clean it up. Now, and walked out. Jaden then yelled, it was Jack. I stormed right back into his room, and screamed at him it wasn't Jack, because there is no Jack. Two days after the incident I walked upstairs to put Jaden's clothes in his drawers and found him standing on top of his cupboard. His cupboard is about a meter and a half high, so I was astounded he climbed up there. In a panic I yelled at him. What are you doing? Get down. He said to me, Jack told me to jump. I have to be nice to Jack or he will hurt me. It was that point that I realized maybe Jack wasn't so imaginary. I decided to put in a baby monitor, and if that failed I decided I'd put in a camera. I kept the monitor in the kitchen, so I could hear it from a distance. I was at the dinner table, when I heard the monitor start buzzing. Almost static white noise. I could hear Jaden talk, and then static would start, but every few seconds I could hear a voice. It was unclear, and I couldn't understand what it was saying, but obviously Jaden could. I rushed upstairs and of course, he was playing with Jack. 
so I set up my camera and had the baby monitor running. I was going to find out what this was. I was in the kitchen watching Jaden play and saw blocks, toys, and books all moving by themselves. I was frozen in fear, watching in panic. Jaden stood up and said no Jack. No. Jack must have been yelling, because all of a sudden I heard a big booming voice over the monitor, yell I will hurt you. Out of nowhere I heard a loud thud. This caused me to run. I sprinted up the stairs, yelling for my son. I found him crying on the floor of my bedroom, he was laying in pain in front of my cupboard. I comforted him, and rushed to the car. I drove him down to the hospital, where they found he had a broken rib and sprained wrist. After he had calmed down I asked him what happened. He just told me, Jack pushed me off of your cupboard. That week I called the priest in to cleanse the house, and Jaden really seemed different, of course in a good way. He seemed to be very light in a way, and he also seemed not to be afraid of the house. Three months later, and he still hasn't mentioned Jack. When I was little I had a whole gang of imaginary friends, both human and animals. One day my mum noticed I hadn't talked about them in a while, and asked me what happened to them, to which I replied as calmly as ever, that they were in a car crash and had died. On another creepy childhood note, when my brother was just learning how to talk he grabbed one of those small toy hammers, and crawled onto the sofa where my dad was sleeping. He then leant in close, and whispered one of his first sentences. Smashed dad's head right into his ear. From another thread. The rare occasions in which small children have alluded to having violent experiences that led to previous deaths freak me the fuck out. The most detailed one I ever heard was actually delivered secondhand through my friend's mother. Apparently beginning around the time my friend could form sentences until he was little more than two, he would go on and on about how he was a Native American named Kanchan and that after his wife and son got sick and died, he moved to a mountain to live by himself with his horse. He died of a broken neck when he fell into a ravine. Weird shit, man.